This question starts out by giving us a whole bunch of information, and we want to read through it carefully and organize our thoughts. So from this paragraph, we see that n equals 50, the number of people equals 50, the initial wealth of each person, so what they start off having is $50,000. Their utility function is w raised to the 0.5, or the square root of w. There's a 10% chance they lose 10,000, and there's a 10% chance they lose $30,000. So that means there's an 80% chance they don't lose money at all. The administration cost is equal to $50, and we're looking for the expected wealth at first, and we're looking for the certainty equivalent because we need to answer the question that says, what is the value added by the insurance industry? And he goes on to clear up, it says that is, by how much does consumer wealth with insurance exceed the certainty equivalent of wealth of the gamble faced by individuals without insurance, summing values for all individuals? So we know this information. Now let's start out by finding the expected wealth. We already said there was a 10% chance. We're gonna lose 10,000, so we'll end up at $40,000. There's a 10% chance we're gonna lose $30,000, so we'll end up at $20,000. And there's an 80% chance we don't lose any money at all, so we end up at $50,000. We sum these values and we find that our expected wealth is $46,000. To find the certainty equivalent, we need to go back to our utility function, which was W raised to the 0.5. So the certainty equivalent raised to the 0.5 is equal to, now we're gonna bring in our utility function at each state of nature, 10% of the time, we're gonna end up with $40,000. So 40,000 is raised to the 0.5, multiplied by 10%. 10% of the time, we're gonna end up at $20,000. So $20,000 is raised to the 0.5, multiplied by 10%. And that 80% of the time, we're not gonna lose any money and end up at $50,000. So 50,000 raised to the 0.5 is multiplied by 80%. We work this out and we find that the square root of the certainty equivalent is equal to 213.025, so to solve for the certainty equivalent, we need to square both sides. And we see in this question, the certainty equivalent is equal to $45,379 and 8.837. So now we found the expected wealth and the certainty equivalent. The cost of insurance, they told us in the question, was equal to the expected losses plus the administration cost. And he, in, this, in the paragraph, he told us this was a perfectly competitive industry, insurance market. Well, what you need to know about imperfectly competitive industry is that all the firms are making zero dollars worth of profit. So they're identical firms, they're all making zero dollars worth of profit, which means the amount they charge us is just gonna cover their cost. And the cost of the firm is the expected losses plus the administration cost, how much it costs to actually have people filing the reports, taking the phone calls, making the policies. So we need to find what the cost of insurance is. First, let's look at how we find the expected losses. Well, that's what we start out with, the, the initial wealth, minus what we expect to end up with, minus the expected wealth. So in this case, the initial wealth was $50,000, the expected wealth was $46,000, so our expected losses for the firm is $4,000. So the cost of insurance is that $4,000 plus the administration cost of $50, so our total cost of insurance for the customer charged by the firm is $4,050. Now we found the cost of insurance. We remember what our expected wealth is and our certainty equivalent. The value created by insurance is the difference between how much we spend to get insurance and how much we would be willing to spend to get insurance. The initial wealth minus the certainty equivalent is the most we would be willing to pay for insurance. Because remember, the certainty equivalent was a single amount of money we'd be happy to accept to not have to take any risk. So right now we're starting out with $50,000. We have this year ahead of us that we have to take all these risks. Well, our certainty equivalent tells us, in this case it was $45,379.84 roughly, that tells us we'd be happy to accept that amount of money and not have to take any risk. So 50,000 minus the certainty equivalent, that's the most we'd be willing to pay for insurance. And we see here, 50,000 minus the certainty equivalent gives us $4,620.163. So that's the most we'd be willing to pay for insurance, but we already found how much we would pay for insurance if there's an insurance market that existed. What we actually pay was $4,050. 
So the difference between these two numbers is the value created per person. So an individual is willing to pay $4,620, they have to pay $4,050, so they're, they're uh, re retaining some consumer surplus there, they're retaining some value. It's creating value, the insurance market has created value um, for every person. So the value created per person is the difference between those two numbers, in this case, $570.163. And the total value for 50 people is just that number times 50. And in this case, the total value for our insurance market, which contains 50 people, is $28,508.15.